What's up, everybody? Project Porsche, yo. When you start tearing stuff apart, you do find things. And I found this. Previous owner must have been trying to stop the leaks in the gas tank. So they must have tightened down every bolt to try to make this seal better. Probably fix the gas leak, which probably wasn't even coming from this. And in doing that, they bent every single spot. And it's a good thing that the tank has a heavy piece of metal welded in where this bolts to, otherwise it would have bent the tank. This thing does work. The other thing that's a little weird about it is this ground is uh, loose. I think I might just put some hot glue on it or something. But yeah, Project Porsche. So I went to Menards. Did I say big money? I went to Menards and got some uratic acid. I picked up some Zep. It said it's professional degreaser. I picked up some uh, clear flex seal as seen on TV. What else? Oh, I bought some Gorilla Tape to seal the tank. Uh, Tank. Time to work on the tank. The tank looks really good. I, I think it's just leaking when you fill it up tall. This looks good. The fuel hoses were so corroded, the fuel just sort of leaked out all around them and left that darker area on top of the tank. Ah, uh, 17 fits over this thing. Besides leaking out of the fuel level sending unit and the corroded hoses on top there, everything else looked good. So I could concentrate on cleaning it up and resealing it. Ooh, ah, uh, just like Jay Leno. All right, this looks pretty good. It was in pretty good shape and it was a Purelator brand. So at first it looked bad or it looked like there was a lot of rust in there. But after looking at it, I realized that most of that rust is actually chunks coming from higher up in the tank. Bottom looks stainless for goodness sakes. The inside of the floor is actually really good. So those chunks are coming from somewhere else. Hmm. It's rusty up here. I think it's time to take that off. All right, this is a H4. H4. Four. I should get out the old speak and spell. Super easy. There's quite a few of those little washers like that on this car. You know, before I take this off, I'm gonna clean around the top. Electronic cleaner. That electronic cleaner really comes in handy. I use it more than I think you would. It's definitely a candy thing to have around the garage. Oh, it's not even. Well, that would probably leak right there, huh? It was leaking underneath there from the roller coaster top. The float is inside that thing. It looks really good down here. It did actually, it looked way better inside there than I was expecting. I am going to pull off these hoses and measure them before I take the tank to the car wash and clean it. Gotta put on a new band-aid. I pinched my finger, working on cars, right? Seems like every day I need to put another band-aid somewhere. So now I must do my search on you. Too big. That's what she said. I'm just gonna use a screwdriver. So this hose was really on there good. <laughs> I really wrestled that thing to get it off. I could have just cut it, but I wanted to keep it intact to match up the length for later when I cut a new one. So I wrestled it off of there. 0.636 inch, whatever that is. After getting these measurements, I decided to order 10 AN braided fuel hose for the large hose that runs across the top there. And then I went to my local auto parts store and bought 3 16ths 
regular fuel injection hose for the small hose that runs along the leading edge of the tank there and 3 8 inch for that hose right there. I'm going to remove these, uh, these things and then glue them back on where they go. So I measured where all those little pieces of rubber insulator were glued onto the tank so that I knew where to glue them back on when I was done painting the tank. I'm going to remove these clips and put them back on when I'm done. And I did the same thing for the clips that hold the fuel hose to the edge of the tank there. There's one clip there that holds the wires for the reverse light switch. The other clips are for the fuel hose. And I, I picked up the spray bottle because I don't have any good spray bottles around here. Um, and after reading the instructions, it makes it sound like you want about a one to six ratio with this stuff. And I'm gonna take this bad boy with me to the car wash. Well, that sucks. They're all out of soap. At least I brought some with, so hopefully that'll be good enough. I was planning on using the engine degreaser that comes out of the hose at the car wash to clean the inside of the tank, the inside and the outside, but they didn't have any, so nixed that idea. And while I was there, I washed off the heat shield too. I sprayed some of the degreaser inside the tank. Tried to spray around in there with the hose and get it cleaned out as best I could. I was at the car wash for a while. But yeah, after a bunch of scrubbing and spraying and scrubbing and spraying, uh, the tank looked pretty doggone good. And here it is. Fresh from the car wash. Got most of that junk off of there. Gotta blow it out. Deterioration or something there. It looks like they use glue to glue that plastic expansion chamber down on the top. I don't know if there's a reason why they would put the glue there, but it, sh it looks like it's the same glue that they use to glue those little rubber pads down with. Well, that doesn't look bad at all, does it? Almost looks like somebody sealed this thing or tried to, or is that just factory? Even up here, where I thought it was bad, it doesn't even look that bad. I'm, I'm going to say that it was leaking around the hoses because you can see where the paint is eaten away. There, around this hose, um, but it looks pretty dang good. I think I'll just clean up the rust and uh, hit it with some paint. I'm happy with that. I mean, it's clean in there now. So I taped up the outside of the tank to keep the sanding debris from getting in there. And I went back and forth using my hands, some sandpaper, uh, a flap disc on a grinder. I used a wire brush on the end of a drill to try to really get into the crevices where it was rusted. And I managed to collect a few of these little bottles of Rust-Oleum rust stripper gel. So since I had the tank down to bare metal and there was still some pitting there, I decided I'd go ahead and use some of that. So I grabbed one of my dollar store paint brushes and painted that gel on wherever there was a little rust left on the tank. After the rust gel sat on there for a while, I washed the tank off with hot water. Then I washed it down again with soapy suds and water, dish soap and water. Then I rinsed the tank down one more time and I dried it off with some compressed air. And then just in case there was any residue left, I took some paint thinner and wiped down the tank one more time before I shot a couple of light coats of primer on all the bare metal areas so that the tank didn't rust until I was ready to start painting the outside. Got my, I have my 
paint suit on. What do you think? Pretty sweet, huh? So once I had the garage warmed up a little bit, I threw on my super fancy paint suit. I'm probably driving some furry chick crazy right now. Uh, but I put on my fancy paint suit and I shot a layer of black spray paint on the tank. <clears throat> so I lost the top to this yesterday and I just found it. Get, looks like I stepped on it. Or obviously I must have stepped on it. So now the question is, will it work still? Dun dun dun! Shake it up. Ooh, 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 shake it up. We'll dance all night. <laughs> Testing! Testing, one, two. Oh, oh shit. Oh, it's stuck. Damn it. Uh. That stuff is stinky. It works. So I put on my protective respirator gear and I started with a can of Rust-Oleum truck bed coating and then after that ran out I moved on to the Rust-Oleum leak seal that I had left from a previous project. I wanted to get the top of the tank covered with what I had because I figured if I ran out I could shoot the bottom of the tank later once it was in the car if I needed to. And it turned out good. I came to the conclusion that since I have the tank out of the car, I might as well seal it. And I hope that this way I'll never have to take the tank out again. And that the next owner will never have to take it out. So, so I wanted to protect the edges of the tank again. So I redid my foam rubber and uh, packaging tape protection. And then I gathered some chains, some bolts, some clean pieces of metal, and I put them inside the tank, and then I sealed the tank back up with some Gorilla Tape, and also some rubber caps. So I mixed up a, a weak mixture of muriatic acid and water. I got that muriatic acid from Menards for five bucks. And since I had already cleaned the inside of the tank and degreased it, I used a pretty weak mixture uh, because I was going to be dumping it out and I didn't want it to hurt the floor or my driveway or anything. And so I mixed that together and then I shook that tank with all my might for as long as I could until I was tired. And then I drained the acid mixture out and then I rinsed it with some clean water. Yeah, I was sore. If you want to work on core and upper body strength, just redo a gas tank, because man, I was sore after that. So I just ran down to my local auto parts store who happens to carry PUR15 and picked up this pint of sealer. 96 hours, it says is how long this stuff has to cure before you can fill your tank back up with gasoline. It seems to me these cans are harder to open than they used to be. Yeah, they're just really tough to get open. Whenever I go to Leon Chin, I always grab some chopsticks. They always come in handy. So you're not supposed to shake this stuff and I think it's because if you do the bubbles don't come out of it and you end up getting bubbles in your finish when it's done and dry. But anyway you have to, to stir this stuff and I stirred the living crap out of it and no matter how much I stirred it, it still didn't turn into a uniform silver color. So finally I just decided that that must just be the way it is and went on with pouring it into the tank. I poured about half of it in to start, and then any little drop I could, I tried to use on any part of the tank where I felt like it, it might not reach from dumping and turning the tank around. So after I filled it up and sealed the tank up with some Gorilla Tape, 
Then I went about moving the tank around, shaking it, rocking it, trying to get the sealer into every little crevice possible inside the tank. After I spent some time rocking the tank around, I took a small paintbrush and I taped it on the end of a long screwdriver. And I dipped that in the silver sealer and went inside the tank with my flashlight and my camera. And any spot that didn't get the coating, I, I coated that way with the paintbrush. I also used these puff balls that POR15 sells. It's like a, a puff ball on the end of a coat hanger. And I did the same thing with those. I dipped it in the sealer and then went around the inside of the tank on any spot that seemed like it didn't get a full coating of the sealer. So with my paintbrush and my crevice puff balls and time, just time, making sure I got it into every little nook and cranny and using every single drop of sealer that I had left. It turned out pretty doggone good. I also untaped where the fuel lines have nipples brazed into the tank and I went ahead and dumped a little bit through those areas and I also used some old school pipe cleaners that I had from my grandma and grandpa's house I saved from years ago, my grandma's old pipe cleaners. And they come in handy for stuff like that. I just looked around with my flashlight, tried to find every single spot where it looked like maybe it didn't reach or needed a better coating. And it worked pretty dang good. I had everything sealed. The whole inside of the tank was covered with the silver sealer. It's hard to see, but Everything is coated and it turned out pretty good inside of there. That dripping there is just where fresh sealer met some of the old stuff that had already started curing. And there it is, one freshly sealed 944-924 gas tank. Next I had to tackle these hoses in this plastic expansion chamber tank. The expansion tank was in good shape, and I was happy to see that. So I ordered the 5 8 inch size AN hose for the bigger hose. That was coming in the mail. And then I had to decide how I was going to tackle the, the smaller vent hose that runs along the edge of the tank there. So I threw the stuff in the sink, I washed it up, I wanted to see if I could use this reuse this hose since it was just a vent hose and it didn't have gas running through it. Yeah, it's coming out all over the place. Can you see that? But after putting some forest air through it, it was pretty clear that this thing was totally deteriorated. I even thought maybe I could use just the end where it flares to a larger size hose so I wouldn't have to figure out how to do that. Uh, but it was pretty clear the whole hose was just junk. I had to find out exactly what size I needed I took a Dremel and cut off the clamp and the little bit of hose that was still left there. Got it. All right. All right, I get 5.46 millimeters for the measurement of that outlet for this end. So I had to decide if I wanted to go with 3 16 or quarter inch fuel line. I decided to get 3 16 because I figured it would be better to be a little small than a little big. I had to come up with an inexpensive way to make this hose. And I happen to have this. So I am going to use a combination of this, a rubber cap, and uh, some 3 16th of the fuel line that I just got. See if that'll do the job, which I think it will. I heated the end a little bit to get it onto the fitting. Yeah, I put a little uh, lubricant on there to get it on just in case. So I picked up 3 8 inch and 3 16th. Then I cut a short section of 3 8 and use that to finish the end of the hose. I decided to use that cap there. Um, I'm gonna run it for a little while with this fuel line on before I seal that cover back on over the filler tube just to see how it does. If for some reason there's any leaks or I think that that rubber cap or the fuel lines won't be able to uh, sustain that environment, then I'll go back. I did find some other things on Amazon there's aluminum fittings, there's brass fittings, there's definitely other ways to make this hose. You can buy a, a pre-bent hose that comes in a bunch of different bends 
and just cut off what you need. So there are different ways to make this hose. The other thing too would be to just make it out of metal. All right, so this cap is a little long uh, and I'm a, a little bit worried about it hitting the bottom of that cover. So I'm just gonna take a little bit off. So I just cut it down a bit. Now I'm gonna put it back on that piece. But in the end, I think that this worked pretty good. I'm gonna run it on the car for a while and see how it does, but I think it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good fuel line hose that should last for a long time. So I had my fuel hose, but I wanted it to be braided like the original. So I came up with this great idea. Straight from the jungle. I went online and I ordered some of the cable covering that's made to protect wires or hoses. And that's the brain I clear. bought a size that I know would fit the outside of the hose really well. And then I threaded that stuff over the hoses. And after I had that threaded over the hose, then I used heat shrink, wire shrink, heat shrink, and I sealed the ends of the braided covering with that. And it worked pretty dang good. I had some pretty fancy looking hoses for way cheaper than braided hose was on the internet if you went and looked for real German braided hose. You push on it like this, it expands quite a bit. That braided covering is just like those old, they call them Chinese finger traps, which is probably totally not politically correct, but do you ever get those when you were a kid? Oh, you yeah. get them in like a go fish oh, bag yeah. at like a church festival or something. Perfect. You'd stick your fingers oh, in them and yeah. then you couldn't get your fingers out. That's awesome sauce right there, homie. This is the quarter inch. Mm, this one might be a little too tight. Or it works the same way, it's braided like that. Trying to see if I could get this quarter inch onto this 3 16th in, 3 sixteenths inch fuel line, but this stuff is a little too skinny. It just doesn't want to go on. Well, I've got 25 feet of the half inch, so I'll have to use that for both. Once I knew it was gonna work, I pulled the, that hose back off so I could cover it with the braided covering. You need to seal the ends of this braided covering where you cut it, and a cigarette lighter works really good for that. So I just kind of matched up. I originally cut the 3 16 hose long, and so here I'm just matching it up to figure out exactly how much length I need. That little thing stuck in the end of the hose there is actually a shelf mount for like a bookcase shelf. You stick them in the holes that are drilled on the side of the shelf and then you set the shelf on top of those things. That's what that is. So you just kind of have to feed this stuff over the hose. All right, now I'm gonna put heat shrink on here. Well, I put the heat shrink on up to the one end and then on the other end, I just put the heat shrink on in like half of the braiding half on half off before I sealed it with the heat gun By the time I was done with these hoses, they all matched the diameter of the original hoses like really closely. This is the 10 a.m. hose, I think. I'm really hoping that it fits on the end of this. The big reveal. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> the plan is for this hose that I got to replace this. And it looks like it might be a little tiny bit smaller. This one is definitely spread from being on the end of the 
But it, and if you look at this diameter, it seems really comparable. It's damn close. I think if I heat it up, it should slide right on there. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to figure out something else because this is gonna be a little bit too small. Hmm, things that make you go, hmm. So I started by measuring the length that I needed to match the old hose. And then I wrapped some white electrical tape around the, the AN fuel hose to give myself a good place to cut with my hacksaw. Then I warmed the end up with the heat gun and I had a ratchet wrench with some masking tape wrapped around the handle to build the diameter up to the diameter that I needed the hose to be stretched to. And once the hose was hot enough, then I forced the ratchet wrench into the end of it and let it cool. Now it's hard to see, but what I realized is that, see how that's like lumpy inside of there? Well, basically I have to try to do this without making it lumpy inside. So I have to be careful to try to heat this up enough to stretch it out a little bit, but not heat up so much that when I do it, I end up collapsing the tube. put the hose in the freezer for a little bit. I think the problem I've been having is that I need to do both ends of the tube and the first one turns out fine, but by the time I flip it around and do the second one, the whole tube is getting so hot that it's collapsing from the force of trying to force this through it. So hopefully this is the last tube I'm making. I placed the whole tube with one end stretched in the freezer to cool the whole tube down and then hopefully that'll keep it from melting when I do the other end. I'm going to take this tape off and try doing this end. So I want to heat this up just enough so that I'm not going to collapse the tube like I did last time. See how this whole seems to be cold now. Yay, I did it! All right. I picked up this flex seal while I was at Menards. Even though that plastic expansion tank was in good shape, I sprayed a few coats of that flex seal over the top of it. I figured why not since I had it apart. Here you can see I'm just putting a slight cut around the edge where I wrapped it with masking tape and I'm just getting that masking tape off of there. There's like metal pieces inside the ends. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but they had glue or whatever that was basically covering the whole bottom of that plastic expansion tank, so I thought, why not? I cleaned up the rubber bits that are glued to the tank. I cleaned up all the little insulators and I cleaned up the straps and the hose clamps. Yeah, those are just the little insulators that go on the edge of the tank there. And then once I had all this stuff cleaned up, then I could focus on getting this tank put back together. So I went and uh, looked at my measurements that I had written down and I looked at my old videotape, found out exactly where these rubber pieces went and I tried to match every single one back to the same spot where it was before. So I had this Loctite spray adhesive, so I just used this. Permanent bonds apply two medium coat to bolster, allow it to dry one minute, then join. Well, that's what I'm gonna do. And wait for a minute. Do 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 I figured why not. I knew exactly where they went. I'm just gonna stick this one back up here. I thought that that might make it easier to wedge that tank up there. I wouldn't be fighting those insulators stuck on the top of the tank. They worked out all right. All right, so I've got the new hose that I've made with the covering and I'm gonna be putting this on the tank based on this one. 
this guy went like this. Yeah, I just used that old hose to know exactly where the new hose should be clamped onto the tank. I grabbed some uh, Scotch-Brite pads and cleaned up the fuel inlets, the nipples for the rubber fuel hose before I put the hoses on. I reused the factory clamps where I could and I used a new clamp on this hose. So I made a mark on the hose so I knew exactly where the clamp would be sitting to ensure a good seal. That worked out good. And then I just started putting it together. Got my AN fuel hose. I reused the factory clamps for that hose. I decided to move it to the floor just to give me some better leverage, I suppose. That expansion tank is asymmetrical, so it's been a while figuring out which way that thing laid on the top. And then once I connected the hoses and everything, it turned out pretty doggone good. It even looks like this picture I found on the internet of what looks like a new tank somebody ordered that came with the hoses and stuff on it already. And there it is. Pretty sweet, huh? Ready to go in the car. I wanted to take care of this dent before I put the tank in. I didn't know if I would have to pound from the other side or, or not. So before I put the tank in, I pounded this dent out. Now I'm gonna take some of this tan silicone that I happen to have and I'm gonna put it underneath there where the factory urethane um, undercoating is chipped off. Which has got a hottest body butter, I had it to his pot. Oh, so you really did it. See your support bra and I support you. I didn't get it on camera, but I cleaned up those spots with uh, brake parts cleaner before I, before I smeared that stuff on there. Time to put this bad boy in. And now it's time to put this thing in. Can you see that? No. Well, I gotta get it up in there. So there it is, the tank is officially back in the car. Next time I'll be connecting the fuel lines, putting in that fuel level sender, and putting the trans back in the car. If you're new to the channel and you like what I'm doing, please hit subscribe. And shout out to my subscribers. Thank you for the positive reinforcement. Thanks for watching guys. Take care, see you next time. This is pretty much the worst video ever made.